Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to dive right into some of the, the juicy math of chemistry. Uh, if you really want to get to the big stuff like stoichiometry, you might not know what that is yet, but you will, uh, we have to be able to measure a lot of things about atoms. Um, but to measure stuff about atoms, we run into certain problems because they're so small. And so what we'll do is we'll start talking about some of these issues of how do you count up things like atoms, because chemistry is all about ratios. How do you count these things up when you can't really count them? They're too small. And so uh, for those of you who are long time viewers, you might notice uh, we have uh, Wally and, uh, and uh, Leo Gurr here. Uh, again, a little bit of uh, spillover from last unit, reactions. But we'll jump right in here. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making uh, uh, some skills. And, and we're going to make a list of need to know here of things that you should be able to do. Now these top four you'll be able to do uh, very soon, by the end of the first two lessons. And then each of the other things after that, uh, each are going to get their own lesson. But today, the most important thing is the idea of uh, atoms to AMUs and uh, atoms to grams, all right? And so, or AMUs to grams. Uh, we're going to be looking at things on an atomic scale, looking between the units of, again, atoms, AMUs, and grams. And we'll introduce moles next time, and each of those skills will have a whole lesson on. Um, and we'll talk about uh, those at their own pace. But and you can always come back to that and make sure you fit up all these skills. <laughs> and so chemists love ratios. We balanced equations in reactions. But really, what does a balanced equation mean? It means that you have a certain ratio, and not a mass ratio. This is an amount ratio, which means that when you're burning methane in oxygen, you're going to consume two molecules of oxygen for every one molecule of methane. And so if you want this reaction to happen, you can't just measure out two grams of oxygen and one gram of methane, because that's not the right kind of ratio. These are ratios based on amount, not mass. And so we run into a real big problem here because uh, ratios are, are really based on counting, on amounts, uh, but not mass. And so how do we get enough atoms or molecules so that we have the right ratios for chemical reactions if we can't actually count that high. It would take forever to count up to a, any kind of reasonable amount. And so what we're going to learn to do is we must get into the idea of counting without counting. Uh, measuring amounts without actually counting out the amounts. We have to use another way. And what we'll use, spoiler, is mass. So Karate Kid references aside, let's talk about measuring without counting. Um, and so let's imagine that you worked at a candy store and you had to measure things out. All right. Uh, you know, if, if someone came in and ordered, let's say, let's say we worked at a, the chemistry candy store and uh, on the wall were, were uh, a different type of jelly bean for each element. Uh, these were gourmet jelly beans. So people usually came in and bought a couple. So it's really easy for have someone walk behind the, you know, work behind the counter and just, you know, sell a couple of these and a couple of those. But let's say we're featured on some show. Uh, making stuff on PBS or the News Hour on PBS, for instance, and uh, and everybody wants to start buying these jelly beans, and you get an order from I don't know some celebrity Justin Bieber who wants five thousand cobalt jelly beans uh, for some party. Now you can certainly count out five thousand jelly beans, but that's a certain that's a very inefficient use of your time. And so how can we count out large numbers of jelly beans? Let's say the next day, uh, you know, Brad Pitt called up and he said, "Hey, I want a million of those cobalt jelly beans." Now that's great, you're making business. Uh, but how do you count out large numbers uh, quickly and efficiently? Because you can't actually count them out. We don't have all day. Um, and so what we can do is, and, and many of you might have figured this out already, is, well, you, you wouldn't count them out. We, we, we count them by mass. I mean, if you look at a cereal box, it says, hey, listen, these things are filled by weight, not amount. And so the, the idea of measuring by weight to get an amount shouldn't be that new to you. And so let's assume that the average gourmet jelly bean was 5 grams, which is a little big, but for the sake of argument, let's go with it. You know, and then you've got a factor label conversion. You know, so one jelly bean is 5 grams. And so uh, if you wanted, let's say, 1,000 jelly beans, uh, then you would simply do a factor label conversion. Starting with 1,000 jelly beans, that's a counting number, so it's not going to limit significance. And then we'll convert from jelly beans to grams, which, of course, you can do in your head to be 5,000 grams. And so what you could do is you could set out your balance to 5,000 grams and pour on jelly beans until it reached 5,000 grams. Now, is it going to be perfect? No, but it's close enough that you'll get a very near ratio of, je of, of jelly beans to consumer. By the way, there was a sig fig mistake there. I hope maybe you caught it, maybe you didn't. Uh, that should have had only two sig figs because the measurement only had two sig figs. And so that's the basic idea. 
is that you know for any object once you figure out its average mass uh, then you can count without actually counting up all those items all right so if you worked at the candy store the ramification of this is that you could actually put a tag next to everything in the candy store and figure out its average mass so you could do the same thing not everything's going to be five grams you might have chocolate covered peanuts you might have uh, chocolate covered oreos you might have marshmallows cupcakes cookies cakes and so each of these things will have a different average mass but that's okay but you could find the average mass for each of those things so if you got hit on the head and you lost the ability to count you could still work at that candy store because you would just add items to that scale until they reach the proper amount. So let's say if someone wanted a dozen donuts and you can't count out a dozen, you don't have the ability to do it. And I'm, I'm pushing the uh, uh, metaphor here a little bit or the analogy, but you could simply say, okay, well, 12 glazed donuts are going to be, I don't know, two pounds. And you would put donuts on the scale until you reach two pounds. And at that point, you, you would say, okay, I guess that's a dozen donuts. Now we do the same thing with atoms. Now we, now, we don't necessarily measure them in grams. We actually measure them in something called atomic mass units. And that's a direct mass-mass conversion. That's a conversion that's never going to change. And we talked about that before. Mass-mass um, uh, conversions are independent of the substance. And again, this shouldn't be that confusing. When we learned how many grams are in a pound, you didn't say, well, wait a minute, pounds of what? It doesn't matter. And the same thing goes from grams to atomic mass units. It doesn't matter. So whenever you're doing a mass-mass conversion, the identity is irrelevant, all right? And we can do the same thing for atoms. And any atom on the periodic table is actually marked in atomic mass units. So carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, the thing that you knew as atomic mass is actually its mass in, unit, in, in uh, atomic mass units, or Daltons, as some people say. And if you want to, you can convert Daltons to grams, but just expect for the numbers to be really tiny as you can tell by that conversion. And that's why we use Daltons or atomic mass units because if we're going to use these numbers all the time, we might as well work in something that doesn't have atrocious uh, uh, scientific notation attached to it. And so it looks like uh, Wally's going to be uh, our new co-host for this uh, unit. I'm pretty excited about that. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through a couple examples. And now what I really want you to pay attention to, and pause the video before I, give, I do each example, is think about for each one of these, is this going to be a mass-mass conversion? Is this going to be a, an amount-amount conversion? Or is this going to be an amount-mass conversion? Because if you're staying within mass, then the identity is irrelevant. But if we're converting from mass to, in this case, individual particles, then the identity matters. It matters whether it's a jelly bean or a donut. All right, so in this first problem, I actually kind of jumped the gun and give you the mass right away. If this problem had just said the mass of one atom of carbon to grams, then you would have had to, uh, then the identity is relevant because you're going from atoms to grams. And this would have actually been a two-step problem because you would have had to go atoms to AMUs and then AMUs to grams. Again, everything can be a one-step problem, uh, but uh, in this case, since I gave you 12.01 uh, AMUs, and you could look that up off the periodic table, uh, then you can start right there. This is a one-step problem. This is a mass-mass conversion. So at this point, it's actually irrelevant that it's carbon because it's going to be the same anytime. Uh, whatever it was, it, whether it was 12.01 atomic mass units of hydrogen, uh, uranium, uh, uh, anything, it, it wouldn't have mattered. It would have been the exact same answer. And it should make sense when we're going from atomic mass units to grams, the numbers should get much tinier. All right? So again, if you missed that, I'll give that to you one more time there. Again, so walking through that again, we're going to see uh, that going to grams is a tiny, tiny number. All right? Uh, billions of atoms. Billions and billions of atoms. All right? And so, again, I have a billion atoms of carbons. How many AMUs are that? Pause. Think about that. Yeah, I'm going from amount to mass. So it is important what we have here. This is carbon dependent. And so if I have a billion atoms of carbon, I go to the periodic table, and I get the conversion for carbon. Just like I go to the, the store wall, and I get the conversion for jelly beans. And so atoms to AMUs is right off the periodic table. Um, and then so again, the number should probably get a little bigger because uh, you're probably having more atomic mass units per atom, um, unless it's hydrogen, the number should get a little bigger. All right, I usually take my numbers off to the hundredths place, but again, you can go as far as you want to. I have one milligram of lead, how many Daltons is that? That's a mass-mass conversion, it's identity independent. And so uh, I'm gonna go from milligrams to grams, 
and then grams to AMUs, again, or Daltons. Remember, atomic mass units and Daltons are interchangeable terms. I will jump back and forth as much as possible to get you used to seeing both terms. Uh, again, and, and so I would imagine it's going to get a much bigger number. There's a lot more Daltons uh, uh, than, you, than you would think in a milligram. That's a really, really big number. And then finally, how many lead atoms is that? Well, once we have that many Daltons, uh, that many Daltons could be anything. Uh, but since it's lead, then I go back to the periodic table and I get the lead dependent value. It's 207.2. And so, uh, again, and that would change for anything. And so go ahead and figure this out for any other element. In this case, it ends up being uh, 2.9 times 10 to the 18th atoms. And so hopefully you've seen some examples here of going from mass to mass and mass to amount. It's really important that you distinguish this. It's going to be a huge time saver, and it's really going to save you a lot of heartache later if before you do problems in this unit, you think about, is this substance dependent or not? Because if it's substance dependent, you're going to have to go to the periodic table. If it's substance independent, then you probably already know the conversion. And so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you picked something out of this. Uh, keep practicing. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.